Hello, YouTube. Well, I've changed my editing setup, as you can see. You know, I should turn the lights on. Do, 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 do. Bop. Yes, I've changed my editing setup, as you can see here. Uh, I've changed it to uh, this machine here, this Cooler Master Box, which has my Core 2 Quad board in it. Uh, yes. I have switched to a Core 2 Quad machine to do my video editing, and what I'm using for software is, uh, you'll see when I start the computer up. But yeah, the G5 is a great machine for its time, but it takes forever and a day to export videos with it. And part of that's iMovie 06, and part of that's the uh, the fact that it, you know, it's just the arch the architecture and its age and just, you know, the way iMovie 06 works and things like that. Um, it And above all that, it was just designed in a time when HD really was not all that prevalent. So only, you know, you'd only really need to use that if you were doing the high, high, high-end stuff back then. Um, so, yeah, I'm in the middle, I'm in the process of... Uh, taking files off of it and putting it on that hard drive down there. I'm going to move them over to this machine. This machine is a much more capable machine. I'll show you what I'm doing here. Let me turn the speakers on. And we'll turn it on. Now what I've done, I've put a GT240 graphics card in here. It has the Q6600 Core 2 Quad uh, processor in it. And it has a 1 terabyte hard drive in it. So, that should be enough. Now what I'm using for software is uh, Windows Live Movie Maker. Yes, I know the interface sucks, and it's a little bit harder to edit with it, but it's I can still do fine-grained edits with it, so I'm fine with it, really. What I do with videos is very, you know, it's not very intensive editing. I don't open a file cut pro and then, you know, cut a major motion picture. I literally just you know, split video, delete the stuff I don't want. Yeah, I do I mine is a very cut and dry process. It's nothing fancy at all because that's my style. My style is direct and to the point even if it involves a lot of rambling. <laughs> so, yeah, that doesn't make sense. But here's my background. I changed it from uh the squid background to uh, this film strip and I think it it's appropriate. It looks pretty cool. As you can see, I'm running Windows 7. And you can see a few applications I have pinned down there. I have Firefox for mainly uploading videos to YouTube. Windows Live Movie Maker is down there. And I also have uh, WinDV. Really? White balance. I also have WinDV for... Uh, for the cases where I need to use it. Now, Windows 7 actually has built-in importing, so you don't have to use it, uh, which I didn't actually know until I plugged my camera in and started using it, so let me show you something. Here's my Sony Mini DV camera that I use to film my standard definition widescreen videos that usually have to do with audio, since it has a better microphone. i got a FireWire cable here. Let's plug it in and I'll show you exactly what it does. Get in there, you. So I'll turn the camera on to VTR mode. You know, it really helps when you plug the camera in. I'm so unprepared, guys. Yep. Turn VTR mode on. And the moment you do that in Windows 7, you get import video. And I believe it deinterlaces the video, too. So it's a pretty good importing solution that's just quick and dry quick and dirty yeah quick and dry I don't know I butcher sayings so much it's ridiculous what does it import these as? it imports it imports these as a .avi file so this is an example of something I imported the other day I just imported the entire tape as one file and I edited it down uh, in other ways and these are YouTube exports these are the videos that I most recently did with this computer And there you go. And as far as videos off of what I'm using now, which is the iPhone, it just imports like a camera, so, you know, uh, 
and imports into folders like this. You know, those are the uh, pictures for that, or the uh, films and pictures for that day. So, there you have it. That's what's going to end up having, happening with this video. And let me tell you, it exports ten times faster than iMovie does. <laughs> so, I honestly just got tired of waiting for it to take so long. Not only that, but on the G5 over there, um, exporting 1080p video took like a day and a half to two days sometimes. So, I'd been having to scale back my videos to 720p. And that seem that really does a disservice to the videos because they're shot in 1080. Why not export in 1080? You know. Um, so this is my solution: is to just use this guy over here. Yes, it's not a Mac. Yes, it's not the most fancy editing in the world. But if I'm going to do really fancy stuff, I'll just go and use the Mac. I mean, f most of my editing will be done on here. But if I need to do some fine grained editing, I might find software for Windows or just use the Mac since I already have software for it. So this is this will be the main workhorse of videos now. And I just, just thought I'd show you that. Uh, Windows Live Movie Maker actually exports in uh, H.264. So it exports in the same way that I export on um, iMovie 06. So that works out really well. Now here's the interface of... Um, Windows Live Movie Maker. It's really weird, but you can actually set your own export options. Let me go, uh, let me stick this in here just so we have something as a reference. Uh, look at my funny face. Look at my hand. It's all like blurry. <laughs> Anyhow, save movie. I saved the widescreen NSTC or NTSC, uh, preference so it does the, so it, um, widescreen at TSC. This is what I did. I just created my own preference file that exports at A54 by 480. The bit rate's at 4000 because that's about that's DVD quality. Um, and 29.97 frames per second. And the audio is at 192 kilobits per second at 44.1 kilohertz. So that's that's what I'm doing for the tape cameras. There are already presets for 720p and 1080p, I think, so I don't really need to mess with that. I haven't exported a 1080p video yet. Let me look. Yeah, there's a 1080 one right there. Let's see what that is like. Yeah, there's already a, a 1080p. Although I'm probably going to make a custom setting. So, you know what, I'll just make one now. So... 1280 by 720, that's 720p. Now let's move this to... That's a preset right there. Let's change this to just 1080p. And the bit rate that I'm going to use for uh, YouTube is 6000. Um, this week in Linux if you want to talk to him. He's the one who, he also uses that, and if you look at his videos, they look really good. So, 6,000 is enough for uh, HD on YouTube. If you want, YouTube actually recommends that you use, I think, like 8,000 or something, but 6,000 seems to work fine, so I don't bother with it. Change the audio down to 44.1, since it'll downconvert it anyway. That'll make the files smaller. That's the whole purpose of the bit rates, to make the files smaller, and that's a preference. There you go. 1080p. Now I have a preference that I can use for YouTube. So I can f be flexible and move between editing platforms. Um, if I if I put Linux on this machine, I'd probably be using OpenShot. Um, if I end up putting Linux on here, I'll probably use that. But Linux has NVIDIA driver issues right now, so I'm using Windows to do it. Either way, it'll put it... Either way, no matter what platform I use, it's going to put out a video that works. So... There you go. I just thought I'd show you this setup and uh, show you the software that I'm using. Even though it's not as good as iMovie is, it still takes better advantage of rendering and exporting. So it's just so much faster. So I don't have to, you know, leave my computer on overnight to export and then upload in the morning or something like that. This works very well, and I'm pretty happy with it. So there you have it, guys. Uh, I'll show you what's in this machine.
We have a Core 2 Quad Q6600 at 2.4 gigahertz. No overclocking done because I don't believe in that stuff. 8 gigs of RAM, 64-bit Windows. And there you go. It's Windows 8 professional or Windows 7 professional. And there you go. Let me uh, show you the graphics card. Do, do, do. It is a GT240. Stupid light. It's a GT240. Um, believe it or not, uh, Windows Live Movie Maker actually needs DirectX 10 to even run, which is really weird to me because it's a video editor, but it needed that. I originally tried an, a an ATI Radeon X300 thinking I could just use a garbage graphics card to edit video with, but apparently that the Windows Live Movie Maker needs DirectX 10 to even run, which is a little weird, but hey. What can you do? I wanted to use this computer, so I just stuck the card in there. Eventually, I'll just get a really low-end graphics card for like $30 and stick it in there so I can use it for video editing, because you don't need much for video editing at all, since this Core 2 Quad machine here could be, used to be my main machine and still could be a very powerful computer. It still is. So, there you go. That's how I'm editing now, and uh, just thought you'd enjoy looking at it. Anyhow... I just thought I'd update you guys on that and just let you know I'm going to be a little bit more timely with videos <laughs> when I get stuff. So that'll speed up my productivity a little bit. Anyhow, guys, just thought I'd show you this and have a good one, everybody. Ciao.